A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this morning show. This is why in the morning. My name is Ram Aguko. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. And it's all about matters concerning your health. Cancer awareness. Let's talk about breast cancer awareness. What are the signs and symptoms of uh, breast cancer awareness? How can you be able to fight breast cancer? Is it possible for you to detect it early? What about stigmatization? How do you fight it? Today, let's talk about this particular uh, issue. I am joined in studio by Dr. Mora Bosire. Uh, she is a general practitioner who shall be able to help us in understanding this particular issue. Karibu sana, Dr. Thank you so much, Ram. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to do something with the youth. You're well? Yes, I am on top of the universe as usual by I, God's grace. I love the energy. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult not to have energy around you too, so uh, I'm mirroring you. <laughs> thank you. Thank yes. you so much. Keep the conversation going. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel is where you can be able to engage with us. Uh, head over to Facebook and drop in your questions and your comments and tell us where you're watching us from. I shall, I shall sample your feedback as we continue with this morning conversation. It's all about breast cancer symptoms. Uh, you know, uh, how can you be able to understand this particular issue? But before we head over and uh, touch on the, uh, the nitty gritties uh, uh, of this particular issue here, Dr. Tari, I want us to just start from the general outlook. Yes, sir. Um, when you talk about breast cancer, um, what is the current state of uh, a cancer, especially in the country, and are people aware about it? Do people talk about, about it as uh, they ought to? One of the things is, first, if we talk about the incidence, we're talking about 8% of population. Mm -hmm. Although these studies are rising for obvious reasons, lack of awareness. 8% mm -hmm. of the cancers we have in Kenya are breast cancer, mm -hmm. but it's the second to cervical cancer. Wow. Yes, and you see, both of these cancers require oh. awareness. Mm -hmm. A lot of awareness. But people don't know about this particular Even issue. if people know, they don't have the detailed like approach from a, a medical practitioner mm -hmm. who will tell you these are the things you need to look out for. You know, it, Google is not necessarily always your friend. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why we go to school to help people understand some of these things. And so it's not just copy-paste. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes you can, you can Google something small and then you get a different thing, and thereby misleading your, you know, exactly, yourself. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. And some of the protocols you see people doing uh, based on what can present as a cancer of any region mm -hmm. tends to make the cancer worse other than going to the people who are interested in oncology and want to help and create awareness in the ecological issues mm -hmm. in our country. And, and, and you know, for, so for some Kenyans, uh, this conversation may be difficult or, or, or uncomfortable. And we need you to really be comfortable with having this particular conversation because Dr. Tari here is, to, is here to help you you understand what you need to do the things you need to be to, to 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 start believing in we want to dispense of every myth and misconception about breast cancer we put them aside and we give you the facts absolutely is breast cancer when, when you talk about breast breast cancer are we just talking about women only so breast cancer as it says it's breast tissue uh -huh. so men also have breast tissue Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. both men and women. So they can both get breast yes. cancer. Yes, although the, the risk in itself is being a woman, mm -hmm. but men do get breast cancer. Wow. Yes. So even men need to be able to get uh, you know, screening. Yes, we need to. In these times where things are changing, mm -hmm. for reasons like environmental or, or other reasons as things are changing, men also need to be alert into getting themselves mm -hmm. checked. Mm -hmm. well, in, in your experience, you've, seen, you've, you've managed to... Um, get to understand the how breast cancer uh, moves from the uh, early stages to the late ones yes sir. but i'm aware that there are different types of of, of, of breast cancer yes um just to mention but a few what are who are we looking into so we have a large variety of types of breast cancer which comes into the nitty-gritty details of how we specify the type of cells that affect mm -hmm. but the common one is the lobular one or the ductal type. Mm -hmm. The most common being the ductal type. So the duct is the pipe that will bring breast milk into the nipples. Mm -hmm. And the lobular one is where the glands that produce the breast milk. Mm -hmm. So those are the, most, the two common, top common types. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have a variety of other types, which is based on when we do the histology checks and let you know. And does it matter um, uh, uh, age? 
is it all about uh, uh, for uh, you know for mothers which which where do we have most prevalence so a risk the risk first is number one a woman being the risk mm -hmm. and a woman who had her periods early or became menopausal late or a woman with no children because mm -hmm. women with mm -hmm. many children are covered from that and breastfeeding has shown to reduce the percentage by at least six at least six percent <laughs> <laughs> and one year breastfeeding, so not two months, one year breastfeeding so, reduces so that. So breastfeeding yes. reduces breast cancer chances is. of getting breast cancer? Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. So this thing of, of bottle feeding our, our kids, you should put, put it aside. You know what? I am as trendy as they come, and I did it for one year, and I, I was pleased to do so. So mm. I encourage mothers to do, to do so. Mm -hmm. It has no effect. In fact, if, we, if the, when they come to the clinic where I'm based, I will teach the mothers how to make sure their breasts don't sag, because that's their concern. We can work yeah, on that yeah, too. Yeah, yes, yeah. It, it's possible. It's possible. So let's just breastfeed. Because we, we want to, you, to look young. Yes. Uh, we don't want people to insult us. You know, the society can be so, so, so um, toxic. It's true. It's true. If, if, if you look at the uh, belief systems that are there out, uh, out here, yes. uh, many women um, tend to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this habit of wanting to separate themselves from their child. Yes. And they want to put their child on uh, 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 bottle milk. Yes. But of course, they look for the suction. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Is 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 that also um, having? Can it help reduce breast cancer or increase breast cancer? The the the, 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 the pumping. The, the pumping. Yes. Yeah. So the pumping helps. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let me put it this way. The mechanism of breastfeeding is not only the fact that the milk comes out. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other thing that puts it is the hormone that helps, that is protective towards it. Mm -hmm. So the bonding with the child helps that. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of women suffer psychological issues even before they give birth or even when yeah. after giving birth, yeah, which yeah. dictates how milk is going to come out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we work on women's psychological issues or women who are also more open to get a good vaulted place to discuss their issues, mm -hmm. breastfeeding will turn out to be something they can do comfortably wow. and supported mm -hmm. by other people. And mm -hmm. remember the pump mechanism was not that so that women can and go to work mm -hmm. to so that their husbands can play part because they are claiming paternal leave, isn't it? Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. So yes, what yes. I want to say, dear PR is it it does, uh -huh. it's not that so that we delegate the bottle feeding completely to the to the child. Yeah. You share to the, when he, she's resting, you mm -hmm. give the bottle of milk because mm -hmm. you're also mm -hmm. at home. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you're one. You're yeah, family. Your family. So you, oh, yeah. the, the man goes with the newspaper and, and uh, watching the game, pale yes. as the lady is struggling in the, <laughs> there in the bedroom. Yes. I'm looking at the um, early stages of uh, breast cancer. Yes. What are just some of the signs and symptoms that can enable someone to detect it early? The commonest one will be a lump, mm -hmm. uh, the breast lump. So somebody will come and say, oh, I found a swelling in my, in my, in my breast. Yeah. But be that as it may, it's usually by the time the lump is there, we've gone a bit too far. So it doesn't mean that the presence of alarm denotes breast cancer. It can be mm -hmm. a benign, what we call benign issues, which are non-malignant non, non tissue. So having a lump on your breast does not mean you have cancer. You're having a lump does not mean you have breast cancer. But if it turns out to be breast cancer, we are, to, we are getting to late stages. Okay. Make okay. sense? Yeah, makes yes. sense. Makes sense. So Is Niki Patalam... Na ni yo lampi fanyue investigation and it's positive. I've it ni menda sana. A lamp is is a is not a good sign in the presence of cancer. So once you detect it, you should seek medical attention immediately. immediately. Yes, don't like, take too long. Exactly. Um, there are sometimes like. I would like to offer mm. that people who find lambs on, the, on, their, on their breasts yeah. should go to a place that is known to examine uh, lamb uh, breasts. Mm. The, concert, the, 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 no, the knowledge of your lamb on their breast on what is happening is better when people have done several. So I'm, I'm not sure exposing yourself to the nearest clinic would be the best, would okay. be the nearest level five hospital. Because mm -hmm. then the training there, uh, there are people, even nursing teams who have been trained to observe and say, even this, this lamp is removing a discharge or a, because it looks like an abscess, mm -hmm. we need to do further things. Let's not mm -hmm. just give an antibiotic and send. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not that I'm, I'm putting aside the, the clinical levels, but mm -hmm. our exposure in our tertiary in this level six has shown us a lot of these lumps yeah. are being missed out in the lower levels yes, because somebody yes, yes. comes and it looks like a, a, an abscess and we're giving an antibiotic and then later the person comes and we are now the thing has metastasized to yeah, everywhere mis else. Misdiagnosis Yes, now, misdiagnosis yeah. and those things. And mm -hmm. it, it's painful when you look at a woman crying because nearly ambiwa he to ni kingahe or whatever they call it and uh -huh. it has just an abscess they've put an antibiotic only for us to come and tell you or oh, by the way you oh, know we can't even give you chemotherapy because it's, it's late. too late. Yes sir. Wow. Yes. And, and, and is, how long does it take for this type of cancer to, to, to develop? Is there any given period there's of no time? Given, do you know like there's a, I have an experience of a lady who in one month her mm. cancer had metastasis. She felt the lump and the, the next thing she, she was telling me, we take the x-rays, we took the CT scan, it's gone to the lungs, it's gone to the abdomen. So there's no given time. I think we approach it more on the, uh, the preventive uh, screening angle mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. when we get it, what do we do? Mm -hmm. yes, and uh, for those who may not understand what you're saying, metastasize. Means moving it? outside the local organ. Mm -hmm. So the organ of origin, for example, if it is the breast, it has moved to the lungs. Mm -hmm. If it was from the lungs, it has moved maybe to the bone like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, so sir. cancer can move from one place to another? Yes. Because oh. remember the cancer are cells mm -hmm. which can move through the bloodstream to anywhere else mm -hmm. and attach there and grow. Mm -hmm. As long as there's nutrition in an organ, uh, 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 malignancy or any uh, cancer that has tissues can grow anywhere mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. can move from one place to another, including mm -hmm. also to the brain. Wow. Yes. And so uh, one sign uh, or symptom is just uh, a lump. So um, the, uh, do yes. you have others? Yes. So other than the breast lump, we are looking at things uh, associated with the nipple. So mm. is the nipple discharging? Is there a change in the nipple color? Mm. Is there a change in the in the sizes of the nipple? In how whether it's in intracted, it's drawn in. Mm -hmm. Is your skin around your breast different? Now, women tend to have one breast larger than the other, so no cause for alarm. Oh, that, that is normal. That is normal. So what you want to do is a change in that size. Mm -hmm. So if there's a change in the size, then you should be concerned so that mm -hmm. we'll be able to do the necessary tests. Mm -hmm. And again, nipple discharge can be anything, can be clear discharge, can be bloody discharge, can be pussy discharge. We want to investigate further when we get those type of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, does, uh, for, for, for those who have just come from uh, breastfeeding, yes. the mothers, sometimes yes. they get uh, discharge. Yes. Um, uh, you know, at what point should, should it be a cause of concern or a cause of worry? You know, once you stop breastfeeding, the discharge should stop about three months. Because, you know, remember the presence of the child. Uh, stimulates the hormones that will cause that. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, a regular checkup, self-breast exam at home should Good. be important. Uh -huh. Yes. So when you see something that is outside the norm of when you are breastfeeding, you mm -hmm. seek uh, the necessary help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Self-examination. Yes, sir. And uh, now, um, before we touch on that particular aspect of self-examination, yes. let's look at some of the myths and misconceptions that exist <laughs> in regards to breast cancer. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've, 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 you've dealt with so many patients. Oh, yes. And you get to hear so many stories, and then you're like, my goodness. Do you believe that? Yes. What are some of the myths and misconceptions that exist that you've come across so far? If you don't have a boyfriend, you get <laughs> breast cancer. <laughs> because uh, of the suckling uh, part. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then uh, the other one is if you don't, if you, if you, if you breastfeed your child for less than two years, uh, uh, you, you get cancer. then you get cancer. Essentially, uh, it's just one year. It's a lie. That's a lie. If, the, if mama so-and-so comes to visit you, uh -huh. then you do not get breast cancer. If you eat certain foods, then you not get breast cancer. Uh -huh. uh, if you are taking contraception pills, you will get breast cancer. I mean, those are just... So, so, so now, these pills that people take, yeah. they can't affect... The... No, <laughs> no. Uh, Not the normal pills, uh, like the pills I'm talking about, oral contraceptions oh, and yes, depot exactly. yes. and depot and uh, the the uh, no plant. Mm -hmm. No, no, there's no study. Mm -hmm. It was initially there, but it was nullified in 2016. Now, in in, in the case of Ms. Co um, uh, uh, what is that word? Uh, to uh, losing a child. Yes. Uh, at some point, you know, the breasts always start to develop. 
you know, the Romari glands, they yes. decide to develop those, uh, uh, the, the milk production. Yes. And upon the loss of a child, yes. you know, there is that particular time when some women begin to, um, you know, uh, have some, some secretion. Yes. Um, it, can that affect? So there are two types of loss of a child, and this is like you're, you're talking about an abortion, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So normally, the, 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 as the fetus is developing, mm -hmm. in the first trimester, the multiplication of the breast cells starts to occur in yeah. preparation to milk production. Yes. And then in the third trimester, they are fully matured, the cells. Mm -hmm. So when a lady gets an abortion, whether it's intentional or just an accidental abortion, mm -hmm. then the undifferentiated cells can become malignant, which makes them cancerous. So uh, an abortion, uh, there is a link to abortions causing a person cancer. to get breast cancer. Uh -huh. so there's that, a risk. That, there's a risk factor there. Yes, sir. Uh -huh, there's uh -huh. a risk. And, and, and how, how can we be able to, uh, you know, reduce these kinds of uh, belief? Because there are men who, um, of course, I saw, I, I saw it was trending for, uh, for some time. Yes. Uh, I think, I don't know if you saw that research about uh, uh, suckling, uh, uh, breast reducing breast cancer. So Kenyans went on Twitter and they're like, now our, uh, you know, we should now get our, 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 our rights. Um, <laughs> what is the role of the man in ensuring that their women, their wives, you know, uh, have reduced chances of getting breast cancer? They help them with the self breast examination. <laughs> that you're there more, more than the woman is anyway. Yeah. So it's encouraging to know how to do the the ex breast examination. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm doing it on a patient, mm -hmm. then a man can do it on, and a couple can wow. do it on each other. He checks and you check. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, so a woman can check the for man the man, and, and the, the man, man can, can check, check for the lady. The woman. Mm -hmm. I, I want us to do self uh, that examination. Of course. Right here. Of course. Practically. So, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, l l let me bring in one of our colleagues here. Kuja, uh, mama. Kuja, kuja. I want us to do, uh, to, 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 to do self-examination. So this is how you can be able to do self-examination from home. Yes. So that you are well-placed, you are knowledgeable yes. in regards to this particular issue. Absolutely. So um, just come, just come. Uh, we, we can try on her. Of course. I don't know if you should try also on a man. Is, 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 is it the same? Just come and sit here. It's more or less the same. It's of course, the, the, tissue is, uh, the tissue for a man is smaller, but the concept is, this, is just the same. So Hi. Hi. Yes. What's your name? What's your name? My name is Diana. Uh, I, I know she doesn't have a mic. She says her, 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 her name, name is Diana. Her name is Diana. Um, so she won't talk much, but... Uh, Bef when you're, uh, you're with a, a patient, yes. uh, be before you do that uh, test, because some come to the, the, clinic. To the, to the clinics, yes, sir. what are the, the steps you take as you want to, to go through that particular examination? So first is exactly what I did with Diana. Hi, uh -huh. what's your name? Uh -huh. And the, the eye contact just to make her comfortable and know. And then introduce my name. My name is Dr. Mora, and I'm mm -hmm. going to do your breast exam, which now entails me exposing. Of course, for purposes of here, we will not expose you. But in a setup of the clinic, I will say that I will expose you. Mm -hmm. And then I will ask, are you comfortable with just me being the only one examining you? Or do you want me to bring in another person to stand and witness? Some so abroad, mm -hmm. you don't do breast exams. And even in South Africa, we don't do breast exams without a witness, like somebody to stand next uh. to you. Huh. Uh, because medical but, legal issues yeah. are quite rampant. Uh -huh. yeah, and, so. and, and have you had cases of husbands you know, saying that they will not leave that room? You know, they yeah, say. and in fact we like it when they do not leave because now I tell him, have you seen what I've done? That's what uh -huh. you should be doing. Yeah, okay. Okay. but medical legally there should be somebody standing next to me when I'm examining the breast of a lady, and especially for male doctors, mm -hmm. it's best when they have a female nurse or an assistant who will stand next to them mm -hmm. when they're examining to reduce any issues mm -hmm. after that. Because yeah. remember, we're not allowed to video record yeah, yeah, any yeah. hospital or clinic visits. Is, is, is gender an issue here? For example, you've, you, you've, you, you've seen um, the, uh, someone like myself, yes. I, I come into your clinic yes. and I want you know, uh, to be examined. Yes. Um, are there any restrictions that, or, or, or limitations that exist in terms of gender? 
you know what you just need to be careful is so that nothing goes hazy. if you're going to do what we call very close or intimate types of examinations mm -hmm. where you notice the patient might be uncomfortable something can be misread mm -hmm. it's always good to have a chaperone next to you mm -hmm. so it, a chaperone can be a relative but most of the time you want another medical profession because be a nurse aide a nurse a clinical officer a fellow doctor who understands what you're doing is not anything beyond the medical aspect of what all you're right, doing all right yes all right ah, go ahead <laughs> I, 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 this i will watch <laughs> this one I will watch. yes uh, so normally what i prefer even on my own if you're doing the self breast exam mm. you want to use the opposite hand for the opposite breast for example here like okay, that okay, for okay. yourself the 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 you, opposite hand for the opposite, for the opposite breast, breast. All right, the farthest one. Yes. So if it is on the right hand. So you do the left side of the breast. And if it's the left hand. You do the right side of the breast. Okay. So essentially when you're at home, uh, normally the, we, we encourage after you shower, when you lie down on the bed, it's easier. Right? Mm -hmm. With the hand that you're examining, ready to examine, with the, the hand of the breast you're examining, tucked behind you like this. Why should you do it after sh taking a shower? Usually it shrinks. I don't know whether you notice that. It shrinks the, it gives the shrinkage. Uh -huh. For some reason it's easier to Re examine. Regardless of whether you've taken a hot shower or a cold one. Yeah, it's just a shower. I think just relaxation just, just of relaxation. everything is relaxed because the, the tensing is not there normal day, long mm -hmm. day. Yeah. And I think women experience this after a long day with a bra, it feels like you've carried tons of bricks. Yeah. But after the shower, it's almost like there's a relaxation mm -hmm. so that the tension on the knotting in the breast is not necessarily a lamp that you now freak yes. out and start looking for more. You can attest to it. You're cool, isn't you? <laughs> 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 Any bra wearing lady whose cup size is above a C knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Like here, yeah, they should be braless days. <laughs> <laughs> so for purposes of examination, I'm normally facing her. Mm -hmm. But because we want the viewers to see what I'm doing, yeah. that's why I'm standing parallel to her. Mm -hmm. But yes, I yes, should yes. it should essentially be face to face. Oh. So when I'm facing her like this. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. So why is it also important when I'm facing her? She will tell uh, her face will tell me where there is pain. Oh, so when okay. I touch the presence of tenderness somewhere uh -huh. is an indicative factor. So when you touch the lamb and it's painful also, because there are some people who already have lumps, they've been checked and it's nothing, but then it starts being painful, mm -hmm. we want to see you again. So, so we have painless lumps and, and painful, painful lumps. lumps. So most of the painless lumps are the ones that are cancerous. But if it starts being painful, I also want to know why. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So for this side, I will start. So I prefer to do mine from her examination. I'll do, because I'm examining her, it will be anti-clockwise. Okay. So with your permission, so I will press onto the breast like that, going from the outermost circle of the breast all the way around. And you make sure you're keen not to skip anything from there. So you're going round mm -hmm. and you're going round and you're going round. And you're going down. And then you know the, the size of the tissue of the breast tissue also determines until mm -hmm. I reach where the nipple is. Mm -hmm. And when I'm reaching the nipple, I will squeeze the nipple mm -hmm. to see if there's any discharge. So those are things you watch. Mm -hmm. Then for women, we must also be alert. When is your cycle? Because mm -hmm. during your before your just before your menses, you can actually have a discharge which will disappear. Mm -hmm. A lot of women tend to have that. The ovulatory mm -hmm. places where they'll they get a discharge, the areola, which are the 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 the, the, the dimples or the things around the nipple the nipples, yeah. can become even bigger for some people during their cyclic times mm -hmm. and then it will go back. Okay. And there are some even there's a lump so when we finish the breast we go under the armpit uh -huh. and also check because the breast tissue is also under the armpit you know a lot of women we miss their breast cancer because it's under the armpit mm -hmm. thinking it's a boil so oh. the breast like where i've touched you see that part that irritates you and mm -hmm. you're like hey, what's this yeah. yeah that's part of breast tissue mm -hmm. so the cancer can still also be there so you check there you check under your arm so 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 you you, you go around you do the uh, for me if for if i'm doing my own self breast exam i do clockwise clockwise because but for her because i'm the one examining i do anti-clockwise anti so you want to go clockwise mm -hmm. from the outermost mm -hmm. the one next to the chest wall mm -hmm. Moving in centrally. 
So don't skip, just take it slow, feel. And as the more you do more of the self breast exam, the more you realize the consistency of your breast. Because mm -hmm. there are people whose breasts generally just have lumps. Yeah. Mm, the fatty tissue just has formed the lumps. It's, it's, it's normal. Mm -hmm. After the first ultrasound or mammogram, then you're told everything is fine. So you learn, okay, this is now a, a new lump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it has to be consistent. You now, keep checking. You can do this regardless of the size of the breast. That Any you size of the breast, breast exam can be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and men, it's easier because men, it's uh, unless somebody's a little, and even if they have the man boobs, what they call man, man boobs, mm -hmm. generally are not as big as even the smallest cup size of a lady. So it's mm -hmm. easy for men to detect their lumps and all that. Wonderful. Yes. So we, we, we're done with that? It's as simple as that. As simple as such. Imagine. And you only need to do it every month. Some people keep it up every two weeks, but I find it cumbersome. Two weeks. Uh, two weeks is. But why don't you just do it monthly? Two weeks is too much. If I find it too close. What's the window period between the first two weeks and the second two weeks if you're doing a good job? At, are, uh, at some point, sorry to cut it short, at, at some point you, you, you mentioned you touching the back of your head. Yes, and, as to you look, expose. You see, when I touch that, you see when I'm like this, how is my breast? And then look at that. So okay. the breast tissue is more exposed. Mm -hmm. Easier for you to examine in a better circumference way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the no lollipops. <laughs> it's not the dentist. <laughs> uh, no, we don't give lollipops. You know, I see dentists. Hakuna zawadi kwa Zawadi ya kuwa mzuri. Iyo ni nakwachia wewe ram. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you do uh, uh, breast cancer uh, self examination That's how you do self-examination yes. uh, from home. Uh, your partner can help you. Uh, if at all you are alone, you can also do it yourself. Yes. So most importantly is you move from one breast to the other with mm. your hand up examining the opposite breast and the hand up examining. Lying down usually is very more comfortable. But using a mirror can help. Okay, me, I have problems with mirror because I'm mm. like... I never, you, you I'm never, confused when I see the mirror, I don't even know what's happening with mirrors. So I prefer and I find it more comfortable when you're lying down. But, but not like Larry, you mentioned something that mm. uh, uh, is quite intriguing. You said for some people, they always have those, uh, you know, lamps are, 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 are all around themselves. Mm -hmm. But now how can you di differentiate or detect that this is a normal one and this is a, a, a cancerous one? So now this takes me, number one, we want to schedule you your screening. Mm. So what happens? I teach you how to do the breast exam. Mm. I examine. So I, you want to have a doctor examine your breast and if it's lumpy, do you the necessary test, an ultrasound or a mammogram, tell you everything is okay. And then I tell you, when, I teach you now, when you feel your breast is like this, these are the lumps, these are normal lumps. So anything out of this mm -hmm. is abnormal. So again, consistent check of your breast uh -huh. is what will help you know if there's a deviation to the lumps that you normally have. And there are people who have come, like I said, they are non-cancer, non-malignant non cells. So we, the, the lump is still there. We've tested, we've done a biopsy. It's come negative for can breast cancer, but we need them to continuously check. So we're looking at increase in size of that lump. Anything that changes with that lump, bring you back. But that means you're consistently checking mm -hmm. your breast. But how can we reduce uh, misdiagnosis? How can we? One of the things is what we had mentioned is in a center that has been developed uh, yes. to do the cancer screening. Mm -hmm. For example, like where part, part of where I work is called Kilimani Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. This month we are doing free screening free for screening. breast. Free screening. You just mm -hmm. go on Facebook, look mm -hmm. for Kilimani Cancer Center, call that number, show up. Guys, let's do that. Yes. Pick your phone right now. Pick your phone right <laughs> now. In fact, there's somebody waiting. We already had this system set in place. We've done, we've gone to places where we are doing the screening for uh -huh. people. Come, it's at 40 suit that is near Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. Suit number 808, Dr. Nderitu Anthony, and mm -hmm. you'll find me and, and I, or him I, there. I know Dr. Nderitu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he well, is my mentor. So there wow, you go. Wow, uh -huh. wow. So there you'll come and you'll find able doctors will be able to see you and mm -hmm. teach you how to do the self breast exam. We have able staff who have been taught and trained. We've been gone out doing outreaches. We'll mm -hmm. still continue. And even there'll be more screening. So we are even looking at doing, personally, I'll be doing the wellness checks. So even okay. after October, anybody who is interested in just doing a wellness check per se, they will get the, my details from the same Kilimani Cancer Center mm -hmm. and we'll be able to do it at a fee.
wow. for just a general wellness check for all the other types of cancers mm -hmm. that you have. And I know we are doing breast cancer, but I must put in pap smear, pap smear, pap smear for cervical mm -hmm. cancer because mm -hmm. it's the leading cause of death in this country yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. So in mm -hmm. as much as we're also tackling the breast, we're also going to do the pap smears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wellness check, wellness check is going to be throughout the year, but this time it's free. After October, we mm -hmm. start going back to charge. Back to a charge. Certain so for, for now, take advantage of this particular free mm -hmm. cancer screening. Kilimani Cancer Center, 40 suit 808. Do they need to book? Call to book, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. How, how, how can they do that? They go they to the Facebook mm -hmm. of Kilimani Cancer Center. There is a number there, call and book. Kilimani Cancer Center on Facebook. Ensure that you go there and book, get screened. It is for free. Najwa, Kenya, wanapenda vitu zabure? Ndewezo sasa. Ndewezo. <laughs> now, um, th thank you so much. That was a very lovely uh, il illustration that you've just given. Thanks. But now there is a stigmatization that uh, you know I I evolves around cancer. Yeah. You know, uh, I I how can we reduce this stigmatization? And what are some of the stories that you've had that are actually touching in in the, that touching line? On, uh, you know, uh, in terms of stigmatization story comes in mind there are many because i've dealt with so many women but the one that i quickly comes is this lady she had what people called stage four breast cancer mm. and everybody told her she needs to you know put her things in order uh, leave the husband to marry another wife uh -huh. well husband decided was going to marry another wife anyway mm -hmm. stage four cancer what have you uh, send the children wherever they are well now she's a She's a survive, cancer survivor. It's been five years wow. gone down. And, and she's now very vocal. And she's strong. And very vocal in that wow. she does not want women to be told uh, something and just take it lying down. Mm -hmm. So stigmatization comes mostly because of ignorance. And ignorance is not bliss. Whoever did that, I don't know. Who, we don't know who that <laughs> who said that. It's not bliss. They say, they say ignorance is bliss. It's not it's bliss. bliss. It's stupidity. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bliss in ignorance. Yeah? What uh, you know, you overcome. What you know, you succeed in. Yeah, the more yeah. knowledge you have about something, the more better you are. Like I, these I people who are fleecing other people, it's because of ignorance. Mm. All fleecing that is occurring, all stealing that is occurring is ignorance. Once you become into the light, it's mm. fine. There's a stupid joke that goes around that says if you want to hide something from an African man, in you put it in a book. <laughs> you see? There's no bliss there. <laughs> so ignorance is what, and when we come in and we do, like a lot of awareness programs, like uh -huh. what we're doing right now, yeah, where yeah. we've already touched something on somebody who is somewhere who's going to watch us, mm -hmm. and no, let's us examine our breasts like this. It's not too late, because let me tell you, we have doctors who are trained and well trained mm. to deal with these cancer issues. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. Don't listen to the grapevine at the, oh, this one told me I'll be well and you died and mm. then at it, that's a bad doctor no mm -hmm. remember doctors treat god is the one who heals but yeah. come your point of faith is with wax by coming to see this the doctor who will help mm -hmm. you ah i love that yes i love that your point of faith is with wax <laughs> by coming to see that doctor yes some men, you know, look down on women just because they got cancer. And, 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 and for some cases, um, sadly, they even have one of their breasts getting, you know, uh, removed. Yes. And then now we say that now you're, you're no longer a, a, the woman that I used to, to, to love before. Yes. How can you reduce such kind of uh, mentality? Is there a way that we need to, uh, to talk to our men? Is there a way we need to talk to our men to be able to embrace their women regardless of, of you know, the state at which they are? Exactly. One of the things that we can do is obviously have talks with men to address what it means for them to have a wife who has gone through breast cancer and therefore has had a mastectomy, mm -hmm. which is removal of the breast. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about with them, having yeah, a closed yeah. door meeting with men and addressing their insecurities. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people leave each other for small minor issues. That's a discussion I've had with one of my very good friends. Minor issues are the reasons why people leave each other. Yeah. So if we get to understand the partnership as a friendship first, because there are five types of love. Once you have those five types of love in mm -hmm. a relationship, mm -hmm. Living chances of a person walking off is restricted by the fact that they have the God kind of love for you. Wow, wow, yes. wow. Um, how, what would be your message to that cancer survivor who is watching you today? Cancer that has, survivor? yeah, that, oh. that, that you know, is, 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 
is, is also strong enough. I mean, so many cancer groups, cancer awareness groups, wow. and uh, they are trying to make uh, cancer uh, to, to become a national disaster. They're trying to, to rally that. What would be your message to that part, part, particular person watching you today? Number one, a cancer survivor is congratulations, and we thank God that you have survived because mm -hmm. the team that was used was used by God, number one. Number two, give your testimony. Encourage other women who are, who are going through it. Because a lot of people psychologically is what takes them to the grave. Mm -hmm. A good support system has been shown. We have so many systems that have developed. Like now, you saw Kenyatta National Hospital launching its palliative pain and palliative care yeah, team. Yeah, and yeah. a palliative doesn't really mean that we are really concerned good, talking about people who are dying. It mm -hmm. means that we are also helping you as you walk through your disease. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of counseling in that pain and palliative care. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's what I would encourage them. Walk oh. with people. Testify those things things be there be an example of the screening don't shy off facebook get a facebook page and talk about your recovery uh, journey mm -hmm. and how you got it early and how, or how you got it late and got so you through you know uh, so it's it's always so important to testify and have that in I, documented I, I, I know there is somebody watching today and is wondering can breast cancer be cured can breast cancer be can cured? Can it be cured once, once you've gotten that diagnosis? Uh, just to, you know, break that uh, kind of information out there for someone to know. So normally with cancers, we don't call them cure. We mm -hmm. put it on either remission or actually we call it disease-free time. Ah, uh -huh. yes, yes. So what we want is to, for you to be, get to lower than detectable levels of the cancer in mm -hmm. your system. Mm -hmm. And yes, that is possible. Well, that is possible. Yes, sir. Um, for those who believe in, 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 in concoctions... Yes. On a summer, they will drink this, mix it with this, add it with this, and drink at the, uh, at, at the end of the day. Yes. Do those things work? No, unless the concussion is juice, lemon juice, you know, just for your own entertainment. Mm. No, they don't really work. They don't, they don't really work? They don't really work. So to, 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 to ask you, could you, Do you know how there? many people we see who have drunk concussions and they've come so late? And it's something we could have done something about. You've, Again, you've seen aware it happen. yes, awareness, lack of awareness, uh, ignorance, your bliss, bliss. Yeah, Maneno. yeah, yeah. Let's it, do away with that. Wow. Uh, let's, le, what I would encourage even the government to do, send us guys are ready. Send us Kirinyaga, Embu, <laughs> Nolo, Turukana, Mata, to please, I'm ready. <laughs> Create awareness, I'm ready. I want us to look at the uh, treatment, the expenses that are there. Um, how, how draining can it be? And what do we need to do about it? You know, the biggest, yes, it's a psychological, it's an emotional, and it's a financial drain mm -hmm. to people. The financial part is the recurrent, the, we have cycles of chemo. So somebody can have several amounts of chemo, like mm -hmm. we can do up to six cycles, which means you get six, uh, chemo six times, and those are, that's, that is expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, things like NHIF, insurance, try to come in, but they really don't help that much. I wish there would be more uh, cover for such like diseases, because remember, yeah. it's still a good majority of people who have cancer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people die with disease. So even if they, they die, we were to say that we're going to do postmortems, we might find that somebody has it and, and nothing was done about it. So mm. one of the things financially, if the government could provide a way, I mean, increase the amount and a chair would perhaps provide for a patient who is getting chemotherapy yeah, yeah. Uh, or radiation therapy, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Use, get more psychological and social support systems for mm -hmm. their caregivers. Because let's also not forget the caregivers. I mm -hmm. think also the caregivers get even equally over overwhelmed by taking care of a person with cancer because they are helpless yeah, individuals. Because yeah, yeah. remember, we all have to fight against the hero mentalism. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are your helpless helping somebody. It's a drain on them emotionally, also psychologically. Mm -hmm. So financially, that could be useful. We set in parameters. We set in like, um, you know, uh, what are like funds, national funds, where we get them from abroad to say this is going to be for cancer uh, patients and this is how we are going to help them with all the things that they need. Because oh, remember, wow. it's not a one, it's not like a headache where I give you paracetamol mm. and you're okay. This is, there's a journey. And even after we finish chemo, we still, there are things, we still need CT scans after that, MRIs for whenever it's necessary. All the other things that will come up after we are evaluating your, your, mm. you as a patient to call you disease free or in remission. 
Um, Stanley Kenywa uh, anauliza hapa hivi what food fi, uh, can you eat that can fight breast cancer? All right? Uh, you, you can answer that. Food no, there's no food to there's fight. No food. There's no food. Because they also say the fatty that was all these things have been nullified. Fatty mm. foods. The only thing is alcohol relation. Even smoking, there's no relation to it. Alcohol mm -hmm. relation has been shown to increase the effects of breast increase the risk of breast cancer. Uh -huh. Taking alcohol Taking increases alcohol. chances of getting breast cancer. Yes. Ladies. I've seen beautiful ladies. Even uh, men. Uh, Even men. Uh, calm down. I, I am down. <laughs> <laughs> What my sister you saw me them. coming. I saw you coming. I'm like, this one I'm taking for my sisters. Ah, even men. <laughs> even men. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want us to, to finish this conversation. Yes. And I want to give you a chance to have a final word. Yes. What should be our take home for the day? Speak to that Kenyan who is watching you, that Kenyan youth who is watching you this particular uh, Tuesday morning. That is your camera. Thank you. So what I'd like to encourage is let's do screening, screening, screening. And, and getting to know, once you know something, send it to the neighbor. You know, we used to have this thing where we used to say, if you want people to know more things, you tell a woman because they are faster than an email. So, but we have Facebook now, we have everything. Speak about awareness. Let your people in your rural home know about these things, about screening. And number two, if you find something, whatever it is, don't be afraid. I've told you about Kilimani Cancer Center. Come. Even if you don't come for the regular screening, which I don't think you should miss, but you can come for us to do checkup on you on Kilimani Cancer Center at Fosti Suit. We also have a, a place in Doctors Plaza Kenyatta National Hospital, mm -hmm. number 52. So just come, get yourself checked. And by the way, early detection helps a lot. This thing, we can fight it. Let's just fight, stand up and fight for the people who have cancer also to get their rights because i mean everybody deserves a, a chance a good health care plan so wonderful. that's what i would say wonderful yes that is dr mora bosire doctor yes Asante -san. thank you so much ram thanks for coming thank I, you I, I i believe we have touched someone's life who is watching you today amen yeah yes. amen and as, as we're saying let's talk about these things let's not be ashamed about it yes. let us come out and talk about them and come out of these myths and misconceptions yes. and stigmatization yes. let us promote the good things that are there exactly. that exist that can be enabled to push someone to 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 to, you know, to look forward to tomorrow yes. because being a diagnosed of breast cancer is not a death sentence. It's not. And it's the, not. Okay, and the witch doctors are not that privileged to cause it either. <laughs> so just come. Let's, so, let's talk about this thing. The more people know about yeah, it, the more yeah. that people know their solutions. Because uh -huh. the reason why people in the rural homes don't come is they don't know. They, don't know. they think that it's time to write their will and go. And there is Dr. Mora and Dr. Anderitu trying to solve Try, this yeah, problem yeah. and it can happen. Thank you so so there is hope. Thank you so much. You're Thank you so much. Welcome. Keep tweeting. Keep the hashtag going. The hashtag is one in the morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel. Uh, keep engaging with us. I value, we value your feedback. And we want to say that. Thank you so much. A big thanks to Dr. Tari Mora and uh, what you're doing. Keep it up. I'm sure that we are going to ensure to, to come next day, a time like this. I'm sure we'll have saved so many lives. Amen. Take advantage of this cancer. It was all about cancer awareness and uh, specifically breast cancer. Have you learned something? I sure have. My name is Ram Maguko. We've come to the, uh, the tail end of this particular segment, but we still have more in store for you on this particular show. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. This is Why in the Morning.